Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome to another video. And Jesus Christ, I might have to stop looking at the comments. Jesus. So for those who know, I uh, just released a video where I put the Meet Kevin song and the whole little intro thing. And I basically talked about how Microsoft and Apple, which are two stocks that I talk about often on this channel, uh, beat earnings and did well today. And I guess some people took offense to that. Uh, I guess all I can say is um, if you felt some type of way about that video, then I mean, I apologize. I'm not trying to come off as cocky or arrogant. I didn't think that video came off as cocky because I put comments of people who told me I'm an idiot for putting most of my money in great companies with great balance sheets instead of speculation and risky stocks. It's like, holy cow. So that video was mostly just a joke on the people who basically tell me that it's better to invest in Jeremy stocks and speculation and risk over the greatest companies in the world because you either won't get as high of a return or because some weird thing that Apple, Microsoft, et cetera, are overvalued, which by the way, just keep in mind, people have been saying the stock market and the large cap stocks are overvalued literally for the last like five, six years, literally. Go back and look. They say it every year. Oh, Apple's overvalued. Oh, Tesla's overvalued. Oh, Microsoft's overvalued. If you had listened to people who said that those stocks were overvalued in 2020 or 2021, you wouldn't have got a 27% return on your money or whatever the return was. Now, obviously, some of those gains have been wiped off, sure, but some of those stocks have still held on to their gains from last year, and Apple and Microsoft are uh, two of those stocks. If I look at Apple right here, Apple is still up 21% from a year ago, and a year ago, people were saying Apple was overvalued. So it's like, no matter what you do, you're always going to have people saying, oh, this is overvalued or that's overvalued. And you have to determine what kind of person you are. Are you a trader? Are you a scary investor? Like, oh, my God, everything's overvalued. I'm just going to hold my cash and wait. Or are you a if I see a company that's at a great price, like one of the best companies in the world pulls back 10, 15 percent, I'm going to pull the trigger. Then you got to decide what type of investor you are. So not everybody has to be like me and that's okay right but for me personally um i actually bought apple back when everybody said it was overvalued i bought apple uh way back in 2021 i was buying apple then and guess what everybody was saying they were saying the same thing it's overvalued blah 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 and guess what 21 percent return on my money so that's why i said you you can't fall for that stuff i mean People can say what they want, but when I look at the fundamentals, the fundamentals for this company look great. Even Microsoft. Microsoft is up 10% from last year. That is great considering most other stocks are down or have wiped away their gains. You know, Microsoft was up 10% in the last year. Most stocks are down 50% within the last year or 60% or 70%. So that's why I talk about these stocks as much as I do. I mean, I'm not a fan of sitting on the side in cash and just... I'm just going to wait till everything goes like you. That, that's almost timing the market in a sense. Like if I see a big pullback like we're literally having right now, we've already had a 20 percent pullback in most of these companies. So why wouldn't I buy? Like it just makes sense to me. I mean, especially if you're investing for the long term. So that's just my opinion. I mean, you don't have to agree, uh, but it is what it is in terms of the last video. If you guys don't like those videos, fine. I won't make it anymore. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I thought I was poking and having fun. I mean, I have no problem admitting that I'm wrong. I've admitted that I'm wrong several times. I admitted it about Google, Facebook. I've, I've admitted it plenty of times. I think a lot of people get caught up in, um, I don't know. I think a lot of people just get butthurt and jealous a little bit. And I don't know why, because I say this all the time. My philosophy is not unique. I never claim that this is my philosophy. This is literally what Wall Street does. I told you guys this. Go look at the best Wall Street people that have public funds and look what they own. They all have Google, Apple, Microsoft in their portfolios. All of them have that. So all I'm doing is following that blueprint and telling you guys, look, this is what the big boys are doing. The big boys don't have Tattooed Chef, Smile Direct Club, and The Honest Company as the largest holdings in their portfolio. That's how you lose your money. They've got their staples. They've got their big boys that hold the portfolio strong. They've got, uh, well, they don't always have index funds in their fund, but you should. You should have index funds. And then the staples that the big boys have is always going to be the best companies in the world. It's literally always the top largest holdings in the index funds that you hold. So it could be like a Tesla, an Apple, uh, Apple, a Microsoft. Some funds even have Berkshire Hathaway, things like that. That's fine. But that's really all I preach on this channel. That's really all it's about is just following the fundamentals and just being realistic. Because I know everything in 2021 20, was going to the moon, the moon boys and 
10,000% return and 10x your money. And I'm just trying to bring a more realistic approach to the stock market and go back to 10%, 20%, 25% returns instead of 500% returns, which just isn't realistic, okay? So there you guys have it. This is the last time I'm talking about this. I am just going to read the comments less because you know what? I am not going to be able to please everybody. And at the end of the day, I am human. So I am always going to make mistakes. And if I ever offend or hurt anybody or whatever, do something that people don't like, then I always apologize for that. That's not my goal. My goal is to talk about finance and stocks that I like and also have some fun with it. That's just my personality. I like to have fun and make jokes. That's just who I am. Okay. All right, we are going to move on to the actual content of this video. So today, lots of headlines came out because some interesting numbers came out. And basically, we are looking at the fact that we are officially in a halfway recession. And so the numbers came out and the U.S. economy declined minus 1.4% in the first quarter. Uh, this represents a sharp slowdown from the plus 6.9% growth in Q4 of 2021. And so let me also say this, because I know not everybody knows what this is. So what is a recession? Very simple. A recession is simply a period marked by two consecutive quarters of negative growth in a gross domestic product, otherwise known as GDP. And a lot of people are saying, oh, this means we're going to get a recession, but not so fast. That's not necessarily too, uh, true. We actually have had quarters where we had negative GDP in one quarter, and then the following quarter, we ended up having positive GDP, and then we didn't go into a recession. So that's number one. Number two, let me also say this. If the fact that these numbers are coming in the way they're coming in actually could be good for what we think the Fed might do, it actually could cause the Fed to maybe slow down and cause the Fed to think maybe the economy isn't as hot as we thought it was. So maybe we need to slow down on our tightening. So those are some good things. And I also wanted to talk about tech. I've had some of you guys ask me why I never talk about Amazon. I'm not going to say I predicted what happened today, but I just don't, I've never really liked Amazon. You know, I thought that Amazon was another pandemic play too. And I thought, I don't think Amazon ever really came down. So I think you're starting to see that now. You know, Amazon also benefited really well from the pandemic. And a lot of stocks have gotten killed because people are going outside now. So they're not ordering as much stuff. And I think you might be seeing that with Amazon. Now, I know for a fact, because I did look at their earnings a little bit, uh, a lot of the miss in revenue or their growth or whatever, their numbers came from the investment in Rivian. So that really hurt Amazon. So if people are asking me, hey, do you think I should maybe consider buying Amazon now? Uh, I don't know. I can't help you with that because I've just never really been a fan of the company. I'll be honest. You should never let emotions affect your investments. But unfortunately, I just don't like Jeff Bezos. Never have. So I just have no interest in this crappy company. I'm sorry. I like uh, can't remember the CEO of Microsoft, uh, Sadella. Sorry, I'm, I'm not going to try to say his name. And then you got Tim Cook with Apple. I love them. Absolutely love them. Huge fan of them. I think they're great people and I think they do a great job running the business. So for me, it's always going to be Google. It's always going to be uh, Microsoft, Apple for me, index funds. And it's not always tech for me. It's, it's really not. I'm, I am looking at getting into Starbucks. I do want to eventually add into Costco uh, if that opportunity ever comes. I know the thing is freaking ran to the moon. Uh, so I think somebody asked me about Berkshire Hathaway. The only reason why I haven't added to Berkshire Hathaway. Wow, Amazon's down 9%. Oh, actually, it recovered a little bit. The only reason why I haven't bought Berkshire Hathaway is because they charge like a 1% whatever, like a 1% expense ratio, and I don't like that because um, what's it called? Actually, no, I think it's more than 1%. I forgot what it is, but I think VTI's expense ratio is lower. I mean, Berkshire Hathaway isn't terrible, but I just not really that interested in it. Even though I do like Warren Buffett and stuff, but I just like the way my portfolio is. And also, I still really like Disney. I know Disney is absolutely getting crushed, but I'm telling you, man, Disney is just one of those stocks that, man, it just is really just screaming by the fear, in my opinion. So uh, Disney, I really like as well. Uh, overall, I think we had a mixed earnings. So, you know, in the short term, who knows what's going to happen in the market? But I think in the long term, you're really seeing some nice opportunities to dollar cost average. And buy some stocks at some really cheap prices. I mean, like I said, everybody's going to say, oh, this is overvalued. That's overvalued. But you can actually argue that the stock market is overvalued. You can argue that everything is overvalued. But that's just not going to stop me from putting cash to work. You know, if I see stocks that I think are opportunities, I'm going to go ahead and take it. You know, let me just say this. Some people said, you know, I'm just dumb or NVIDIA is going to do whatever and it's dumb. 
I bought Nvidia like two hundred and like ten dollars, and it went all the way to one eighty, and then it bounced back, and it actually did hit two hundred today. I mean, that's just how it goes. That just goes to show you, you're never going to catch the bottom, but things really do flip on a dime. So if you see a company that you really love for the long term, and I really believe NVIDIA is going to double from here in the long term, you just got to pull the trigger and buy. You know, you can't worry about all the noise. The market is irrational. I mean, you can honestly argue that there are still a decent amount of stocks that are still overvalued. And people always tell me, you know, oh, these stocks are going to crash. You're an idiot. All this stuff is going to crash. And it's like, Honestly, I like these companies so much. I really don't care. Like if Apple or Microsoft or Tesla or some of these companies crash, I mean, honestly, that would be great for me. I would just buy more. Like I don't get mad when you guys tell me that stocks are going to die or crash. Honestly, I hope they do. I hope you're right. I really do. I hope everything crashes. I hope we go into a mean, nasty bear market where everything goes down five, six, seven, ten percent every single day so I can continue to buy the heck out of the dip. Honestly, that's how that's really how I feel. And I think that's what how every investor should feel, because, like I said, this is all about uh, building long term wealth. So uh, that's where we're at with it. And, uh, yeah, my stocks remain the same. Like I said, those aren't the only stocks that I like. I mean, I do like AMD. I do like NVIDIA. Uh, Pepsi beat earnings, so it never came down. But that would have been a good buy. Um, oh, yeah. Somebody made fun of me for buying Netflix because I bought one share at 220 and now it's at 197. Oh my God, what a big drop. Like, um, yeah, I honestly, if Netflix continues to fall lower, which it could, I'd, I'd probably buy more. I like Netflix for the long term. I think they'll get it together. I really do. I think at this valuation, it's hard to not buy it. You know, this is still a fang stock. This is still one of the best companies in the world. I, I don't like the fact that their business is all streaming. I don't like that. I wish their business was more diverse, kind of like Microsoft's is, but. You know, it kind of just is what it is. So, uh, yeah, there you guys have it. That'll go ahead and conclude today's video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.